Hey, uh, first of all, just thank you everybody for joining and just, just taking a break from recruiting and all that stuff, uh, you know, to, to share some information and, and again, open to questions, uh, you know, as, as we go along. Uh, first slide, obviously, I'm the wide receivers coach at Columbia University. And, um, and you, know, you see, it doesn't say wide receivers. It says the Columbia University flight crew. Uh, and that's one thing that I, you know, I, I, I lay my, I hold my hat down on is that, um, you know, give your group a name, have an identity, um, you know, and, and the guys will, will gravitate to it. I, I use it a lot in recruiting. You know, it gives, it gives recruits, it gives the current players something to, to grasp on and to feel a part of something, you know. So that's a big deal for me to, you know, to make the guys feel a part of not just the team, but the team within the team. And, and that's who we are as the wide receivers at, at Columbia University. Um, just, just first off, you know, some of my coaching beliefs, um, you know, first one, have confidence in your abilities. And, you know, as wide receivers and at, at the high school level, at the college level, it, it's an it's a ego-filled room. It's a room that, um, you know, the guys individually have different personalities, but, but typically they all have big egos and, and great personalities along with that. Um, but, but to remind them to, to, to be confident in what they're doing, uh, and, and their abilities and, and the things that they put out on the football field. And that's on and off the field as well. Again, being a part of the flight crew, you know, have confidence in yourself. And I, I want them uh, to really to, to feel free being who they are as individuals. Um, applying pressure in the meeting room uh, is, is a big deal for me. You know, I talk about two minute, two minute in the meeting room is two minute on the field. And, and basically what I'm saying there is that when I'm on the board or they're on the board or we're watching film or whatnot, um, you know, uh, asking them questions, but getting a response quickly, you know, not giving them a whole lot of time to ponder and, and think about it and, and stutter and go through, you know, their mind and, and the ways that they may think, but, but making sure that they think quickly so that when they get out on the field, it pops to them in the same way. They're able to go back to uh, how they remember the play or, uh, how they remember this, remember the signal um, in order to, uh, again, apply it on the field. Um, tying in film uh, with pictures for playbook purposes, for practice slash game prep, you know, whatever you may be doing. But, but to make sure you're tapping into each uh, individual's, you know, way of learning. You know, if, he, if a kid just learns better by pictures rather than words, or if he learns better by, by drawing. But, but my biggest thing is to tie in pictures uh, with the film. And, and again, when you're going through playbook and practice um, preparations, uh, being able to push through negative plays and tough times, that next play mentality, and, and I'll scream it all through practice, next play, next play, next play. And, and sometimes that's even doing positive plays as well. Um, you know, sometimes guys want to celebrate a lot more than they should, you know, next play, let's get back on the ball. Let's get ready to go. Our offensive coordinator, uh, he wants to go fast. You know, so if, if he wants to go fast and my guys are the guys that are holding up uh, our ability to go fast, you know, that, that's on me. And, and that's on us as wide receiver coaches if our guys with that ego, with that confidence are doing a little bit too much. Um, and then finish every play. One of my biggest things, it was going to be going into this spring, uh, one of my biggest things was to make sure I defined finish uh, more and, and uh, more frequently, I should say. And, you know, you, you have drills or, or – whatever and and sometimes you just kind of let the receiver or you let the player just run out you let the player just just finish how he finishes but um during some of the the skill work uh you know that you, you get a little bit of time before spring ball starts um you know the biggest thing was to to define finish so actually setting out a finishing point two cones that you need to run through and I set the cones out about a yard and a half, two yards apart for the guys to just finish through and make sure that everybody is finishing in the same way. And I'll even critique myself through the, through the film that we're about to go through. Um, there are times where I saw it and, and, and didn't see the defined finishing point. And that's where, you know, I basically decided I need to define finish a little bit better and, and more. Um, stands and start is, is first and foremost. Um, and, and the guy that, uh, I looked up to growing up in, in the coaching profession, Latrell Scott. Um, he, he would grill me when I was a younger coach, and he, he would always say, what's the first thing that you're talking about? 
you know, and, and the one thing that we always, um, that he always taught me and said was stance and start. Get the guys lined up, all right, and then have, have your rules, have the rules in which, um, you know, every receiver in the room uh, lives by. And, and, and for us, uh, you want to be balanced first and foremost, and then you want to get your inside foot up. And how do, you, how do you get balanced? How do you know what balance is? You know, sometimes you can just stand in front of God, tell him to jump up straight up and down. He'll come down with his, his feet shoulder width, shoulder width apart. All right, now he's on the line of scrimmage with his feet shoulder width apart. Ask him to uh, take his outside foot back. All right, keep his inside foot up. All right, and now he's balanced. And, and that's one of those stances that are like this rather than being stacked on top of one another because then you're not balanced. All right, we want to have, you know, um, a good distance between our feet. Again, around that armpit to shoulder width apart, uh, depending on how the guy's legs are built. Um, majority of weight on the front foot. Back foot is used for balance and burst. Uh, having great weight distribution. A lot of guys say 80-20, you know, 75-25. Um, but, uh, you know, you – in the Ivy League, if you tell a guy 80-20, you better know what exactly 80-20 is because he'll ask you. Uh, and, and that's not just for the Ivy. That's a lot of, a lot of kids around the country. But, um, you know, so I say just have uh, the majority of the weight on your front foot and have good weight distribution, all right, so that you're able uh, to, to burst off um, without false steps. Arms are relaxed and comfortable unless you're being pressed and your arms are up, uh, and, and I always use the, the – Slogan, be, uh, be ready for the fight. Have your arms up uh, versus press. Eyes on the ball. Uh, we're doing a lot of things. We do a lot of things with our snap count and, and going on two and, and things like that. But our, my guys should not be um, – should not really be tied into that that much. Um, you know, their eyes should be on the ball, and they should be ready to roll when the ball is snapped. Uh, avoid false steps, you know, a big thing, especially if, if there's no kind of press. You know, the defender is playing off. You know, we want to make sure that we're getting we're getting going as quickly as possible. And, and my first my thing is always that first step should go up. You should drive that back leg up and out. All right, getting as big as big of a first step um, as possible, and and then just explode off the ball aggressively. Have all of that in your mind and explode off the ball aggressively. I typically, uh, when talking to uh, players and, and recruits and, and, and coaches. I like to say that all of those things on that on that slide, I can typically say them within a very short amount of time, um, and, and the guys know what you know what I'm expecting. Uh, stance and start, stance and start. They know the checklist there of stance and start. Uh, and then we'll just go into a little bit of drill work, and this is how we start practice uh, for the first couple of practices practices of camp and and uh, you know spring practice. We won't do this. Uh, necessarily every day, um, but we will we will do this early on to make sure everybody's on the same page as, as to what I want uh, when I say stance and start. Sorry. You guys are going to get lined up. Everybody's got the inside foot up to wherever I am with the ball in my hand, and they're just taking off, making sure that first step is their best and biggest step. And then when it goes into route running, it's the same thing. I want to make sure that first step uh, is, is, is a great, great explosive first step. Um, Pre-snap pre -snap checklist uh, is, is what our mentality is next. And, again, I'm building this thing up. Stances start, and then it'll build up throughout the whole uh, responsibility of the wide receiver. Um, Pre-snap checklist, alignment assignment uh, is, is – First and foremost, uh, know where you need to get aligned um, and then know what you're doing once you get there. Uh, and then identifying coverage, um, alignments of, of def the defensive players. Uh, based off of your assignment, what are you doing? Uh, how, are you, how are you blocking? Uh, where are you supposed to be at the end of your route? You know, what's your, your end goal uh, to the play? All right, and just apply those techniques. Apply the techniques that are taught. Um, but the biggest thing is that uh, you know – where you need to be aligned and uh, what your assignment is. Uh, big on those things, uh, alignment and assignment, especially um, if the alignment um, has to do with the route and, and getting across the field, you need to be tighter, you know, so don't be wide and don't, you know, mess up the timing of the route by the quarterback. Uh, and, and just here, you know, releases, have a plan, you know, um, understand if it's, it's a soft corner, 
again, no, no false steps, attack the, uh, the leverage of the defender, uh, his techniques, um, but, but understanding why he is um, playing where he is, you know, as far as his leverage is concerned, is it cover two, cover four, cover three, how, how is his body tilted? Um, you know, and then if you get in a press or hard corner, understanding his leverage, is it inside, is it head up, is it outside? You know, a lot of times we have trouble with uh, releasing versus outside uh, leverage press corners, you know, and just understanding that, yeah, it's okay to go inside sometimes. I know that I've said all through the week, it's a must outside release, must outside release, but you can't get outside. Well, as soon as you get out inside of them and, and get them stacked, get your butt outside and get outside hard, right? You know, you know, and, and giving guys the ability to react when things aren't perfect, when, when things don't work uh, the way they're drawn in the playbook. Uh, when in doubt, use your best move. And, and when talking about moves, I like to give guys about two moves and then give them counters off of those moves. That equals four. And then everybody has a speed release. So five moves for one individual wide receiver, in my opinion, is enough. Again, two moves, counters off of those two moves, uh, and then a speed release. Uh, make your target small. And that starts with stance and start. Uh, and, and also on your release, you know, taking away a shoulder, getting skinny. Uh, a lot, some people call it dip and rip. Uh, that's what, you know, I learned early on in my career and, and kind of stuck with that. You know, it's the same thing, though. Uh, running around the hoop, you know, when you're running around the hoop, you're getting, you're getting your shoulders 12 to 6. All right, you're getting around and, and getting that guy stacked as you release. Um, have control, quick and violent hands. I'm big on, on body control uh, when talking about recruiting. Again, I'd rather have a guy that, is, that runs a 4-6 and can control his movements versus a guy that runs a 4-4 four, four and is just a straight-line speed guy, you know, and it takes him 55 steps just to stop and, and get in and out of a break. Again, a guy that can control his body, and the same with press release, control your hands, uh, be quick, and, and be violent. Um, and then attack and stack, and, and everybody teaches that, you know, making sure you close the distance, step on his toes and get around him and stack him. Uh, making sure that you, you give yourself a two-way go in the situation. Uh, one of my favorite release drills that I do, um, I'll set up a short ladder, actually uh, get the equipment guys to cut the normal long speed ladder, cut it down to about four boxes. Um, and then I'll get these guys going with, um, with, with, a, with a ladder cadence uh, and whatever it may be. They Typically, I allow them to choose and give them opportunity to have some input. All right, and what they're just going to do, I call it club and hammer. They're going to club and hammer down, taking that, that arm straight down, breaking the wrist of the defensive back. Um, you know, some people call it club and swim or, or club and rip, whatever it may be. But same thing, you just apply it to the bag and make it sure it's a quick um, and a violent uh, movement. So as they go through the speed ladder, he's got his cadence, bah, bah, and then he's trying to stack, get in between those two cones get in between the two cones and get skinny with the shoulder. Take away, in this, in this case, the left shoulder. Take it away. I don't allow the defensive back to be able to uh, capture or, or really touch that shoulder. Again, being quick with the hands. Hammer on the second hand. And I'll always talk about the second hand being very important. Coach, you got a question here in regards yep. to the releases. Uh, <clears throat> Coach wants to know, you mentioned having two moves uh, two counters and a speed release. Can you give us an example of what that would look like for somebody? Yeah. Um, one, one of my guys, I, I'll talk about this. One of my guys goes from, uh, say he's got his inside foot up versus press or, or you know, a, a hard corner. He likes to switch his feet on the release. Basically getting himself now, he's almost to level. Uh, and then he'll switch. And now his, say his left foot was up, now his right foot is up. And then he'll shuffle at you. And then he may just speed off of that. Well, I'll tell him, I'll tell him, hey, if you switch your feet, maybe you come to balance and you stab the same way that you typically speed and now go opposite. You know, if I, and, and again, now that's three moves that you can do because now you can switch your feet, you can jab inside and then go the other way. Uh, you know, so I think that's probably the best example as, as far as, as a guy having uh, very similar moves and then having counters off of that move. Is that good? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so just talking routes, um, individual routes begin with a complete understanding 
of the concept, the quarterback's progression as well as understanding the coverage and leverage of defenders. So I played quarterback in college and, you know, I always wanted my guys to be where they were supposed to be, right, as a quarterback. But as a wide receiver coach, I'm thinking the same thing. Fellas, don't don't uh, be late to the party in a way. You know, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. That, that goes for a lot of things as far as accountability. But, um, you know, my guys know that I'm going to be a little bit more hard on them because I play the quarterback position rather than the wide receiver position. You know, so be, be there when the quarterback wants you to. Chemistry with the quarterback is a major thing. Uh, when it comes to routes for me, um, you know, throwing the ball with, with whoever the quarterbacks are um, outside of practice, uh, post-practice, you know, just finding times just to build chemistry. Chemistry also it doesn't have to do with routes. You know, uh, as, as a college coach and high school coach, you can get your guys just to hang out a little bit more just so that they know each other's movements. Uh, again, personality is a big thing. Those things are real when it comes to uh, quarterback, wide receiver, chemistry. Uh, but five phases of route running for me, uh, release, burst, depth, influence, and break. Um, and I talk about that with my guys all the time. Release, burst, depth, influence, and break. Those are the five phases for me. Um, and then uh, when catching the ball, uh, having it being prepared, right? And so we talk about hot hands, and, and everybody, everybody typically talks about late hands um, as far as deep balls are concerned. So you're not giving the, the uh, defensive back. A, a target to, to play through. But hot hands for me, I, I don't know if, you know, y'all y'all know when, when guys run slants at times, they got their arms pumping, boom, they, they stick, and then their arms jump down to the side and they want to make that quick catch like that, you know. But instead of having to take your arms from down by your side and bring them all the way up to where the ball is, uh, is coming, where the ball is targeted, but why not just be running through the route the whole time as you're pumping through a slant and catch the ball you know, with your arms up and then catch the ball like that, you know. So I always talk to my guys about having hot hands. That's also in the mindset of controlled hands, um, being prepared to catch the ball as it's coming to you. Um, so, so my guys, again, using the word hot hands, typically know what I'm talking about. And, and, and you know, you get a response in that way. Um, talking about, you know, all of this too, uh, making sure that your guys – use the language that you use. You know, we all want to be speaking the same language. We all want to be speaking, in theory, Coach Taylor's language for, for the wide receivers at Columbia, you know, so that we all are communicating um, efficiently. Uh, top of the route, I want eyes downfield on the defender. You know, all the time your eyes can't be on the defenders, especially uh, in, in zone coverages, but understand um, that, that you want to you want to control the defender with your eyes if you have the ability to um, shoulders over thighs. You know I want to make sure those shoulders. I want to make sure we start low, stay low. That that's my biggest thing. Start low, stay low. Get, get a great first step. Start low, stay low. Shoulders over thighs as you go to break, right? So that your feet can be controlled, that your body is controlled. You're not leaning back. Uh, great arm action, you know. And I just want the guys pumping. I just want the guys running and, and having again controlled arm action. Um, uh, foot, foot, shoulder, head, and, and break, especially in post routes and slants, things like that. I want uh, foot, shoulder, head, um, and 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 basically all I'm saying is stick, stick a foot. If if you're supposed to be sticking a foot on your fifth or uh, third, fifth or seventh step on, on a post break, um, you know, foot, shoulder, head, opposite, and then go the way that you want, and then control movements. Again, now top of the route for me, I learned this from um, a guy named Sanjay Lau. He was the uh, he was a wide receivers coach at Buffalo when I did the uh, when I did an internship a few years ago, um, and he talked about he talked about running around the cone for your break. So that's what we do as far as uh, running curls and comebacks. We don't necessarily stick that foot and then take that next step uh, away from away from where you stuck your your, your first foot. You know we want to make sure we run around the cone. So if if we're running a a 15 yard comeback. If you put a cone at 15 yards, my guys will then run around the cone. And that way they're keeping their speed. Um, and, and really what it does, as they run around the cone, their, their arms and feet move faster. So it gives a false sense of acceleration uh, to the defensive back. So he, the defensive back may think, okay, he's speeding up to run even faster vertically. Uh, but I'm going to run around the cone, meaning at 15 yards, I'm going to just pump my arms, uh, get my shoulders turned, keep my feet down, stay tight, and come straight back down around the cone.
Uh, and this is an example of running around the cone. And we'll do this probably once a week, you know, because running around the cone is something that you have to get yourself prepared for uh, while doing it. So my guys, basically, I give them an opportunity to actually race each other because that makes you, you know, run the route faster. So. And we'll do a figure eight around the cone. You'll see number 16 get a little wide and he's got to put his hands down. I want to, again, be controlled as I run around the cone. All right. And get your arms pumping, pumping, pumping and getting around the cone tight. And they're going to come downhill. If we're running a comeback, they're coming down here with speed, trying to meet the ball all right, and give themselves room to make a play. And so that we're not running out of bounds every time we run a comeback. Um, this is another top of the route thing. We talk about losing a yard when we run digs and, and um, under five yard under, you know, whatever you run your dig uh, at 10 or 12 yards. Some people run deeper digs, um, but losing a yard, making sure we don't give the defensive back a, uh, a lane to cut you off. So my guys will just run around this bag, lose a yard in front of the, in front of the second bag, catch the ball and puncture. Again, this is probably the slide that I came to and I said, I don't have a true definition of finish right here. And, and, and so an improvement uh, for myself and, and for everyone, you know, make sure you define the finishing point, define the finishing point and make sure everyone holds each other accountable on the finishing point. Again, losing a yard. This is what this drill is for, losing a yard. Uh, catching the ball and, and ball security, uh, you know, see the ball as early as possible. And, and I like to use the metaphor uh, like baseball. Uh, as soon as if you're up the bat and as soon as you can see the ball uh, presented in, in, the, in the pitcher's hands, some guys are so good that they can see a guy holding the ball in a, which way, in a way that they know what pitch is coming, right? Um, same in football. If you can run your route and get your eyes to the ball, as, as quickly as possible, then you're able to focus on the rotation of the ball. You know, every, every pass is not going to be perfect, and you're going to have to change your hands uh, uh, being prepared to catch the ball and then, and then attack the ball. And I'm not talking about attack the ball all the time, just attacking it physically. I'm talking about, you know, being able – I shouldn't say physically – with your whole body, being able to attack, a ball, attack the ball with uh, your mind and your hands, you know what I mean? I'm attacking the ball by standing still and putting my arms out to get the ball before someone behind me is able to get it. So that's when I, I talk about attacking the ball, um, not, not all the time, a full body attack, but at the same time having that mentality uh, to go get the football. And then eyes to the tuck, I'll yell it throughout practice. Eyes to the tuck, eyes to the tuck. And all I'm saying is once you catch the ball, once, once you've received the ball, take that ball to the tuck. I want to over-exaggerate it in pre-practice. I want to over-exaggerate it in, in, in my EDD drills, uh, everyday drills. Um, but so that when you get to a situation, you're playing in a rain game, you're playing in a game where it's really cold outside or, uh, you know, any kind of weather, inclement weather, um, you want to make sure the guys have practiced the mentality of taking their eyes uh, to the tuck, making sure the ball is secure. The ball is secure with uh, an eagle claw, index finger, the palm, all right, your forearm, your bicep, and your pectoral, all right, and we all, we all just want to be here. We all just want to be here uh, with the ball high and tight. Everybody talks about high and tight, but making sure that we have that ball secure, trying, trying our best to avoid um, any kind of fumbles from the wide receiver position uh, during the year. And, and then again, fellas, just, just be believe in what you're doing, believe in your group, and, you know, and that's why uh, again, I, I reiterate the uh, flight crew. That's me. Questions? Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> if anybody has uh, any questions to drop in there, um, please feel free. Let me look. Let me look back up because I know a couple came in um, that I wanted to push towards the towards the end. Um, <clears throat> when uh, to do the average size? What's the average size receiver you're looking to recruit? Yeah. Um, my preference is, is, you know, I try not to go any shorter than, than 5'10". And, and I don't mind not having super tall guys, you know. If, if, a, guy is, if a guy is 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", and he's good enough to play at the Division I level at, at Columbia University, he's probably 
he's probably a bigger bigger recruit than we may be able to get, you know. So, you know, preference uh, 10, 5, 11 to 6, 2. You know, again, having having great body control, um, good speed, you know, but the biggest thing for me is body control, hands. Um, I like to see guys uh, when the ball is – is away from them. I like to see guys run into the ball, uh, say run and play outside zone away, right? I like to see guys showing up in the picture. And I, I yell it to my guys all the time, show up, show up, show up. But just having energy throughout the play until the whistle is blown. No, absolutely. Um, let's see if I have to... I'm not sure how much, how much you know work with. <clears throat> um, let me see what else. Um, do you teach, um, do you teach, uh, just to go over again, do you teach routes um, and break points by yards or steps? Uh, I like steps. I'm a big steps guy. So, you know, three step slant, five step uh, bang, glance, um, and then seven, seven step post. And then we also have a nine step post as well. We, uh, you know, and, and so there's a, there's a whole tree as far as, as that's, as that is concerned. Um, the uh, when you're breaking out, the the numbers are even. All right, so you know we have a, a just an arrow which is two steps, a quick out which is four steps, which I'm I'm really big on. I love quick outs. Um, six step speed out, eight step deep out. Right, you know so so breaking out it's even. Breaking in on your posts is odd. Total numbers. A lot of guys just talk, like to talk about one one foot step. Uh, number, you know, but I, I do the total numbers. But yeah, I love I love numbers. Uh, what is your advice to a young uh, developer of men that played quarterback uh, that would have helped you in learning how to coach the wide receiver position? Just to repeat that one more time, sorry. What is your advice uh, to a young developer of men that played quarterback that would have helped you in learning how to coach the wide receiver position? Yeah, it's all in the details, in my opinion. You know, any anytime you're able to teach football to a, a player, um, it, it, it's all in the details. Um, and then also just just having that relationship. In my opinion, uh, and, and, and for for right now, we're having these Zoom conversations, these Zoom meetings with our guys. I meet with my guys twice a week, and on Tuesdays, we really don't talk about football at all. Um, on Tuesdays, we're we're talking just about life and. And, you know, things that are happening uh, and, and things that are important to them. You know, we talk about music, you know, but find something uh, to talk to your, your players about and so that they'll trust you, one. Um, and then when you go into the football side of it, they're locked in because they know that, you know, you have other interests outside of football. So it's football time. Let's, let's get into it. And, again, let's, let's be detailed in what we're talking about. Uh, what drills do you use or technique do you teach for slots? that are getting collision, uh, collision by linebackers? Yeah, the second level release type, type move. Um, you, can, you can set a, a, a bag very similar to the, um, to the drill I did. I can go back, shoot. Very similar to this drill, but set the bag a little bit further back and allow the speed to build from the slot, right? And we're doing the same thing, but, but you know, I, I want to try to avoid using a shoulder or a hand or arm that I don't have to. There's no need for me to club and rip a guy that's all the way in here, you know, if it's a linebacker and I'm running vertically, all right? As he's getting towards me, maybe you can stick him to hold him, and then as he reaches his hands out, swap him down uh, 12 to 6, and then so that you're able to get vertical. Um, but a lot of times I talk about um, – a lot of times I talk about landmarks for slot receivers. So if we're running like a full verticals type type concept, you know, our receivers want to be two yards outside the hash. Well, if, you're, if your mentality is to be two yards outside the hash and you're not the bender as the slot receiver, it's okay to go four yards outside the hash too. So, so just avoid the collision more than every time thinking that you need to, um, to, to accept the collision, if that makes sense. Uh, what crossover work do you do with the tight ends? With the tight ends? Yes. Yeah, pretty much everything that, that I do with the um, – everything that I do with the wide receivers, you can do with tight ends. You know, again, uh, Coach Coach Fabish, our offense coordinator, is our tight ends coach. Um, and and him, being a, him being an offense coordinator, obviously he has some other things he, 
he can worry about or other people that he can view. You know, I may get the tight ends every now and then, you know, and that, that's my opportunity just to get physical with them, you know, because tight ends are more, more often not going to get collision at the top of their route. So that's, that's an that's a opportunity where you can take, you can do with your own, your body, or you can take, you know, just a pad. As they get to the top of their route, just bang them at the top of the route. Um, and then, you know, one thing I, I, uh, I heard from a tight ends coach before is, you know, you're going to get hit, catch the ball, right? So mentality is to, to, to focus on catching the ball. So, so they do a really good job in our receiving drills, you know, actually receiving the ball. Absolutely. Do <clears throat> uh, you run four verticals? And if so, how far down the field do you ask the outside wide receivers to break on the out if they can't beat the DB over top? If they can't beat the DB over top, you know, usually it's a route. So it's if you're running comebacks, if you're running speed outs, again, speed outs for us, um, you yeah, know, six. But, you know, I my preference on four verticals, and, and I love four verticals, my preference on four verticals for the outside receivers is to run comebacks, and you know, 14 yards, 16 yards, whatever you feel uh, times up the best. And, again, running around the cone you know, not stopping your momentum and, and, and slamming the brakes on that inside foot, um, but running around the cone at that breaking point and coming straight downhill. Uh, if you, and then if, if you get that press and your conversion rules are to just outside release and beat them, beat them deep, reading the boundary safety, that is what it is, uh, you know, what it is. And, and uh, for, for uh, not for, I shouldn't say for us, but over the years, I've grown to really love the bender and the boundary. You know, so, but you can obviously do it from three by one to the field. You can do it from two by two and have the bender be to the field. Uh, switch releasing uh, the four verticals is a, is a favorite of mine. So the outside receiver to the boundary can now uh, be your, essentially become your inside receiver by, by uh, switching and stacking. So, you know, those are things that I hang my hat on uh, schematically, uh, definitely four verticals. Uh, do you have an optimum number of catches you want your guys to have in practice? And do you believe in tennis balls in that count? Yeah. I, not only do I believe in tennis balls, I believe in softballs because of the circumference of, of the front of the football is very similar to a softball. So give them softballs and, and have them snatch the softballs just like they, they would a, a football, one hand, two hand. As far as um, the number of catches, not necessarily, but I do believe in, I do believe in like efficiency. So if I'm, you saw the stance and start drill, and I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, the stance and start drill. Well, we started this on the sideline, all right. And instead of running your guys back to the sideline to, to do the drill, or you know circle around and get back to the sideline do the drill, started at this on the sideline and then pick a point in the field so that you can go back, you know, so that you're not. You're not doing this just to do a drill to go up. You go up and then you turn around and go back. So if, if, in, if in that situation I get four throws to, to a single person, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very happy because if he would have wasted time doing this and they've only gotten two throws, you know, then they were wasting it and not being efficient. Uh, <clears throat> when at practice, what blocking drills uh, do you guys work on daily? Yeah, my um, – I didn't have it on here because of the I didn't have the film at, at Columbia for the block drill. That we did it, film for it. But uh, blocking drills that I love um, are board drills. Actually, set set a uh, set an agile down in, in front of the receiver. Get him to start in his stance and start. Get him to get his feet balanced as he goes across the board across the board, uh, agile pad, and then. Uh, fit his hands on, on a partner. So thumbs up, elbows tight, and then fit his hands on a partner and then drive with that same base. I can get up and, and kind of see if you can see my feet. But as I work through and I work through that agile bag, I want to get to that defender and strike him with that same base. Strike him, and then as I drive, I want to drive with that same base, if that makes sense. Uh, that's that's one of my favorite drills to to do with with, with those guys. Absolutely. <clears throat> Does anybody else have any questions for coach? Obviously, uh, you know, if if, uh, if you guys have any follow up, man, his contact information is there. Um, you know, feel free. Uh, you know, the deal, man. That during this time, take advantage of of the the opportunity of of more time on our hands. Um, you know, you wanna you wanna 
optimize it now because, you know, later on, we're just not going to have it. So uh, appreciate all the coaches for coming in, man. Uh, Coach Taylor, obviously, big thank you. Uh, goes to you, man, for taking the time out of your day, putting the presentation together, coming and talking to us coaches today and, and helping us get better, man. That's what it's about, and I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure, Justin. Thank you so much for everything, man. Thanks for having me on, and, and good luck, everybody. And, uh, again, everybody stay safe during this time, man.